Hi, I'm Torben Janssen from thoughtsonjava.org. JPQL is the most common way to query data from a database with JPA and Hibernate. But it supports only a small subset of the SQA standard, and it also provides no support for database-specific features. So what shall you do if you need to use a database-specific query feature, or your DBA gives you a highly optimized query that you can transform into JPQL? Just ignore it and do all the work in the Java code? Or get a JDBC connection to execute the query? Of course not. JPA has its own query language, but it also supports native SQL. You can create these queries in a very similar way as JPQA queries, and they can even return managed entities if you want. Creating a dynamic native query is quite simple. The Entity Manager interface provides a method called createNativeQuery for it. This method returns an implementation of the query interface, which is the same as if you call the createQuery method to create a JPQA query. The code snippet on the slide shows a simple example in which I use a native query to select the first and last names from the author table. And I know, there's no need to do this with a native SQL query. I could use a standard JPQA query for this, but I want to focus on the JPA part and not bother you with a complex SQL query. The persistence provider does not pass the SQL statement, so you can use any SQL statement that is supported by your database. In one of my recent projects, for example, I used it to query PostgreSQL-specific JSB columns with Hibernate and map the query result to POJOs and entities. Okay, let's get into the IDE and execute a native query. Here you can see the same query as I showed you on the slide. It selects the first and last name of all authors. You can use the query in the same way as any JPQL query. I didn't provide any mapping information for the result, and so the Entity Manager returns a list of object arrays, which you need to handle afterwards. Instead of mapping the result yourself, you can also provide additional mapping information and let the Entity Manager do the mapping for you. I talk about that in more detail at the end of this video. Here you can see the SQL query and the log messages written by the test case. As I said, Hibernate doesn't pass native queries. It just takes the query and executes it. That allows you to use all SQL features supported by your database. The next thing I want to show you are query parameters. You can use them in the WHERE clause of your query to define predicates which the returned records have to fulfill. Similar to JPQA queries, you can and should use parameter bindings for your query parameters instead of putting the values directly into the query string. That provides several advantages. You do not need to worry about SQL injection, the persistence provider maps your query parameters to the correct types, and the persistence provider can do internal optimizations to provide better performance. I said earlier that JPQL and native SQL queries use the same query interface. So you could expect that you can set bind parameters for native queries in the same way as for JPQL queries. And that's almost the case. The query interface provides a set parameter method, which you can use to set the values for positional and named parameter bindings. You can use both of them with JPQL, but the use of named parameter bindings for native queries is not defined by the JPA specification. If you don't want to rely on proprietary features, you have to use positional parameters. Positional parameters are referenced by a question mark in your native query, and their numbering starts at 1. You can see an example of it here on the slide. 
Let's get into the IDE and have a more detailed look at it. Here you can see the same query as on the slide. It selects the first and last name of an author with an ID equal to this positional bind parameter. It's the only parameter in the query and therefore referenced by index 1. I set its value to 5 so that the query returns the first and last name of the author with ID 5. You can see the positional bind parameter here in the SQL statement. And the following line sets its value to 5. Hibernate also supports name parameter bindings for native queries, but as I already said, this is not defined by the specification and might not be portable to other JPA implementations. By using name parameter bindings, you define a name for each parameter and provide it to the setParameter method to bind a value to it. The name is case sensitive and you need to prefix it with a colon symbol. As you can see here, the log output is the same as in the previous example. Hibernate transforms the named bind parameter into a positional before it executes the SQL query. That's all about bind parameters for now. Let's talk about result mapping before I show you named native queries. As you have seen in the previous code snippets, your native query returns an object array or list of object arrays. You can change that if you provide additional mapping information to the entity manager. By doing this, you can tell the Entity Manager to map the result into managed entities, Scala values of specific types, or POJOs. Showing you all of that in full detail would be too much for this video. But I want to show you the general concept and I provide links to more information in the video description. The simplest way to map the result of a native query into managed entities is to select all properties of the entity and provide its class as a parameter to the createNativeQuery method. Let's have a more detailed look at it in the IDE. This is the same query as you saw on the slide. It selects all columns mapped by the author entity and I provide the author class as an additional parameter. Hibernate will use the mapping information of the entity to handle the query result. You therefore need to make sure that your query returns all columns mapped by the entity and that all columns have the same name as in the entity mapping. Otherwise, Hibernate will throw an exception. Let's run this test case and have a look at the log output. As you can see, the mapping of the query result has no impact on the query. Hibernate executes the query as I defined it in the test case and applies the mapping afterwards. When your query result doesn't match the mapping definition, or if you want to map it to Scala values or POJOs, you need to provide additional mapping information. You can do that with an SQL result set mapping like the one you can see here on the slide. This mapping defines a constructor call of the author value class with the values of the columns ID, first name, last name, and numbooks as parameters. Before we jump into the IDE and have a more detailed look at this mapping, SQL result set mappings are a huge topic on its own, and I can't explain all of it in this video but I wrote a series of blog posts about it. If you want to dive deeper into that topic, please have a look at the links in the video description and at the free ebook I share with you at the end of this video. Here you can see the same SQL result set mapping as I showed you on the slide. It has the name author value mapping and it defines a constructor call of the author value class for each record in the result set. These four column result annotations specify which columns of the result set will be provided as constructor parameters. 
So Hibernate will look for a constructor of the author value class, which accepts a long, a string, a string, and another long as parameters, and call it with the values of these columns. And as you can see here, I created a matching constructor in the author value class. That's all you need to do to define the mapping of a native query result to a POJO. You can now reference the SQL result set mapping when you create a native query, and Hibernate will map the result accordingly. Here you can see an example of it. This native query selects the ID, first name, and last name of the author, and counts the number of books she has written. Without any additional information, Hibernate would return these columns as an object array. But I want to use the SQL result set mapping and provide its name as the second parameter to the create native query method. Based on this mapping, Hibernate will map the query result to a list of author value objects. Let's run this test and see if it works. As you can see here, Hibernate executed the query as I defined it in the test case and used the author value objects to write these log messages. As in the previous example, the mapping of the query result did not have any effect on the query itself. Okay, that's all about SQL result set mappings for now. As I said earlier, it's a huge topic. If you want to learn more about it, please have a look at the links in the video description and at the free ebook I share at the end of this video. And now to the final part of this video, named native queries. When you know named JPQA queries, then it will be no surprise that you can also create named native queries. As you can see in the first code snippet, it's defined in a similar way as named JPQA queries. You just have to provide a name and a native SQL statement to a named native query annotation. You can then instantiate this query by calling the create named query method with the name of your named native query and use it like any other query. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the free Thoughts on Java library. It gives you free access to a lot of member-only content, like an ebook about using native SQL queries with Hibernate. In this ebook, I also explain SQL result set mappings in more detail and show you how you can use native queries to update huge numbers of entities efficiently. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. And if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below.